Welcome back. The former CEO of the post office, Mark Barnes, says South Africa is dangerously close to collapse. And he's made a plea on social media to President Cyril Ramaphosa to appoint the right people to positions of power. He says appoint 100 best people and let them get on with it. Well, to discuss, we're joined by investment banker Mark Barnes. Thank you for being with us. Great to be here. Um, you say we're close to collapse. What does a collapse look like? Let me say this, every time we open something and we examine it, it looks a little worse. Okay? And so when you, you know, a, a bridge finally falls in. It's, it's, it, it's a sudden thing once it's incrementally started crumbling. Yeah. And at every level of primal service offering, you know, including electricity, water, uh, you know, the, the, the tidiness of the streets, the availability of food and education, all of these things are starting to me to look like they're falling to pieces okay, at the level where they intersect with the people of South Africa. Whatever we say from a sort of a helicopter view, my yeah. view is, you know, we get, you know, we're quite comfortable now to go from stage four to stage eight to stage. We, we, we're all making alternative plans. But the construct is that the center must hold. And I'm worried that the center is not going to hold. All right. And you're talking about putting people who care, putting people who can get the job done into positions of power. We have to go back, because I, I remember chatting to you when you um, took on the post office CEO position, and you said that you didn't need the, the cash, you, you wanted to make a difference. Um, you tried, but then you left. So for people who don't know that history, uh, just take us back why you left, and, and do you have any regrets? No, I do have a regret. I should have stayed and fought. Okay, I mean, I had a fundamental difference with the direction that the shareholder wanted to take in relation to Postbank. They wanted to separate it, and they currently still. Yeah. And you said the bank should be within the post. And office. I saw the bank as an integral part of the post office offering, as it is throughout the world, where post offices are commercially sustainable. And it wasn't to lend money to anybody; it was you needed access to the national payment system to be part of an integrated economy, which included increasingly e-commerce. And we, want, you know, we wanted people to be able to leave their social security grants in a safe place in the bank instead of carrying them around with them and so on. So yeah. we wanted to merge the commercially irreplaceable footprint of the post office with an el electronically competent access to the systems of banking and so on. Which was, and, and, and the individual locations, many of them, more than any other institution in South Africa, were going to serve as the bridge between the informal markets and the formal markets, every counter was a channel between the state and our people. And so the bank was integral to that solution, and as it is around the world. Yeah, many people calling for a state bank. So what do you think about the, the post office, what's happening now? There is a deal with the health department, I'm sure you've heard about that, to um, hand out chronic medication, so moving into health rather than banking. Um, well, and, and you were saying, let me buy a majority stake. What happened to that? Well, they, they, they didn't want me to. They made up stories that I'd actually devalue the post office so I could buy it on the cheap. It's just nonsense, that, okay? Um, I was in support of the health thing. It was part of one of the things I wanted to do as one of the channels, okay? Mm. And I think that... Uh, I don't know what state the post office is in now. Um, if I'm to take on board what I read, not good, okay? Um, I, I wish it well. I mean, we need a state infrastructure that is access to all people. Why should you go... Uh, from, uh, you know, Tata to Baraguana to collect your antiretrovirals. Why can't you just go to the local post office and get them? Or your or chronic medicine or your passport or any of those kinds of things. You know, it would add to the economy if yeah. we had an infrastructure that could interact but to be honest, Francis, I didn't come here to talk about the post office. That's in my past. <laughs> I, I, I'm just setting this up because you say 100 people, no. um, 100 of the best. So presumably you, you count yourself among those. You're saying you should have fought. Do you, do you see yourself back there fighting? If I'm required to serve, I'll serve. It was, it's not about me, this. It's about the fact that it's self-evident to everybody. Do, do you see yourself among those 100? If I'm called, I'll come. Mm. It's not my choice, okay? It, what, I, what I see is a necessity for us to hold hands, okay? We cannot have the center of power owned by politicians completely apart from the center of economics owned by business, okay? Those two have to find a common purpose. And in order for that to manifest in a sustainable offering, we need a commercial 
fundamentally successful economy to support transformation, to support uh, social development, all of those things require, at the first instance, money, yeah. which has to be made in business, which has to make a profit, which can then be taxed, which can then be fed back into the economy, into education, and all of those services which we require. But if you think you can create those services without having a thriving economy, the less of the economy, the less of the cash available to do that. And so who should be at the table? The politicians and the business people should be at the table, not all. Okay. They should sit across the table, and when we're talking matters business, when we're talking the deployment of capital, when we're, talk, when we're talking what kind of risk return equation will attract offshore capital, then you need business people, not people that, whose background is politics and you know, engineering popular outcomes and driving policy and so on. We're not the same people. Yeah. In the rugby field, the big strong guy in the prop hands the ball to the small skinny guy in the wing because he can run faster. And we're the world champions in rugby because we've understood the end game. Okay. So the end game here is to create a vibrant economy that can support transformation. Okay. Transformation is vital. There is no world in South Africa without a transfer of economic power. Mm. Okay. There is no, there's no survival strategy that can have that. Where is the skill and the transfer now? Not where it should be. Not where it's equally dispersed. Mm. We've had the almost immediate creation of a new elite. Okay, who go to, whose kids go to the same schools, go to the same private hospitals and so on, and they are just as small a group as the previous owners of capital. Let's call them white monopoly capital for the mm. sake of convenience. Okay? But what about the rest? I mean, where has this filtered down? Where is the transfer of ability and skill? Where have we invited the new business people of South Africa to be part of the future economic equation? That is required. And business people know from business. Okay. And they need to be welcomed with open arms. And we, don't, and we, you know, when I walk out in the streets or I go to a game of soccer or rugby, we like each other already. We're over it, us normal people, South Africans. We're an extraordinary nation that's come through the most astonishing, uh, you know, survival strategy. Now, we already embrace each other. Why is the top not embracing, not mixing, not creating yeah. a balance between economic and politics power? Okay, so you need business people, but they also have to have good morals and, and get into a position of power and then worry about the little people that, that you're talking about, or the, the people on the street. Who are, if uh, the no president name. came to you, no, come on, if the president came to you tomorrow and said, give me some names, take yourself out of it. Well, you know, uh, I, I'm not going to give you names because I, you know, you can't sit here and talk about someone Otherwise else on television. Otherwise, it's theoretical. I mean, who must no, you appoint? You, you're saying this is practical. Appoint no, no, these no, people. No, 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 no. I don't do. Th <laughs> who do we want? Okay, let's. You know, I can see. I heard now in Eskom that they're getting some of the old engineers back to come and talk about how to rebuild. Where the new engineers? Why aren't they at the board? Okay. Why? Why don't we have? specialist business expertise sitting on the board of Eskom? Why don't we have specialist financial expertise sitting on the board of the SABC? And I don't know who's on the board, okay? Yeah. Why don't we... Uh, so I'm saying, let's say we want to address water. Who should be on the board? Three politicians, seven water people. People that know how to build dams, people know how to purify yeah. water. People are, those are the people that are going to build the best dam. We could raise money to build dams all day from dam builders. But municipalities won't be able to raise money to build the dams themselves because the dam people will go, you don't know how to build a dam. Okay? So if we want infrastructure development, then we've got to talk to the owners of capital, not the uh, acquiescent CEOs of listed companies who go to investment conferences and kowtow to one another and to yeah. the politicians. Okay, so these aren't people that we all know, um, aren't are necessarily all know. famous, but they are good at what they do they're, yeah, and I they're mean, out there. When you go to the dentist, do you want your mate to be there? I mean, to take your tooth out, or do you want a qualified dentist <laughs> there? Okay, it's kind of simple. Okay, you go and have an, you go under anesthetic, you don't even know the person, yeah. and they, you allow them to put you into a coma, you know. Would you rather you, you took one of your mates that you knew at school to come with you? So, no, so we need experts to become partners. And we need to take the steps towards the middle and embrace one another. We actually need to go for, we need to hug one another. That's how bad it is. There, there was a push for reform and there was some hope around appointments. Um, 
Andre Derated, ESCOM, what do you think of him? What do you think of Popo Malefe, who's on uh, the, the chair of Transnet? Um, the, the head of business leadership South Africa, who is one of the board members at ESCOM. Uh, what do you think about those people who are trying? And you've been there, not, you know it's difficult. I'm not saying there's nobody. Lots of people. The people that you mentioned I'd, I'd support, okay? But, but have we spent enough time talking about the business of electricity? Okay, so if Andre Derater succeeds admirably and creates a perfect system of coal-fired power stations, he would have created a dinosaur. Where's the renewable energy? Where's the next generation energy? If we went to the market today and said we want to raise $500 billion, whatever it is, to re-energize Southern Africa, we'd get the money in a heartbeat because it is common cause that that is the future. And who would we need? We'd need the engineers and the scientists and the technology guys and the weather people and all that. We wouldn't need the politicians. We wouldn't need the people who fought for freedom. They need to enable, to guide, to support, to uh, encourage the people who can get the job done. And there are not enough of those people sitting at the mm -hmm. table, and they're not even welcome. Okay, there's a sort of split between inferiority and superiority complexes between, uh, you know, the sit around the table, not wanting to be impolite to one another, but not getting anything done. Yeah. It's too late for politeness. We need to grab each other by the hand and hold tight, trust each other, believe in each other, give each other a chance. And I'm talking across color lines, I'm talking across backgrounds, I'm talking across ex different fields of expertise. And we need to say, listen, let's have a go. Before we get to a point where we're talking survival, if you look at the behavior of people that I see on the news every day, it's not getting more polite. It's not getting more civilized. It's getting more violent. It's get, why? Because people are hungry and angry and starving and, and, and upset and disappointed. You've got to change that. Yeah. Eh? Final question, because you said, uh, you know, let's, let's cut across the color line. You say appoint the smartest people, black or white, male or female, young yeah. or old, and give them a three-year opportunity. Yeah. Um, in South Africa, the problem is always cited uh, that the people who've been given the opportunities in the past and therefore seem smarter or seem to have the most experience are white people. How, how do you get across them? Well, it's simple. One of the deliverables, which I undertook to deliver when I left as a white person, was to have a fully transformed, demographically representative management team when I left. Okay. One of the deliverables, if you want to invite a white business person into the meeting, then you say, one of the things we, you have to deliver to us when you go is a demographically representative management team. We, there is no South Africa without that. Okay. We're not stupid enough not to realize that. Yeah. So, so, so diversity however, counts at every level. Diversity is not it counts, it's an imperative. Yeah. Okay, so if I happen to have the skill, okay, and I recognize the Jew in the future, I must pass the skill on to you. The captain in the cockpit doesn't fly the plane. The young pilot flies a plane. If that model didn't work, we'd have aging captains who already eventually drop dead in the cockpit. We are not saying, when I say we... Experienced business people are not saying it's our game. We're saying, can we start a new game where we welcome partners to it and where we share uninhibitedly trusting one another the knowledge and the power that are both required to find an endurable solution. It's a beautiful country. We're wonderful people. We've survived the horror stories of the world that are beyond compare. But we haven't solved it. Mm. We're still a part we're still different. We still right. haven't dispersed any capital. We've created a bit of a new elite. So what? All right. Thank you very much for, for coming and explaining um, that, that call to the president uh, that was investment banker and, of course, the former CEO of the post office, Mark Barnes.